Okay, so now we're doing geometric probability. It's the same thing, it's just that you're using geometry to find it. So why don't you guys read it to yourself? Okay, so you're trying to figure out the probability of just getting the shaded part. If you remember, probability is the part over the total. So the part we're talking about is the shaded. So I'm saying I want the shaded over the total, where the total is the whole darn thing. So I kind of feel like it's easiest to figure out the total right now. And if you look, the dimension of this, 3339, three, three, area is base times height. So the total will be 81. Now to figure out the area of the shaded region, well, it's the triangle. And I know it's the triangle minus this. So we've got to figure out the area of the triangle, which is 1 half base times height, which is 1 half my base 9, and then my height is also 9. Okay, So that ends up being 81 over 2, which is 40.5. Okay, But the problem is, this part has to be taken out. So I have to figure out the area, oops, area of the square, which is base times height, which is 3 times 4, which is 12. So really, they just want the shaded, which is this, take away this. So I'm going 40 minus um, 40.5 minus 12, which is 38.5, 28.5. And that's the answer if I, if I subtract. All right. Oh, it's been recording this whole time. All right, 10 seconds of silence. Awkward. I didn't realize I was recording. So now we're going to do this. Draw a circle. I did it. Label the radius. The radius is 3. Who cares? It's millimeters. I'll worry about that later. Draw an inscribed circle. It just means it's in there. It doesn't matter how it looks doesn't matter if it's perfect. I think it has to go all the way down, but whatever. Okay, so there's two. Find the probability of throwing a dart and getting it in the inscribed circle. So you had to find the area of the circle, which is pi r squared, which is pi 3 squared, which is 9 pi, which is about copying uh, 28, 26. I think I've memorized that. Am I right? 28. Mm, I think it's 28, 26, 27. All right, whatever. Okay, you guys get the idea. Then the area of the triangle is 1 half base times height, 1 half 2 times 3, uh, half of 2 is 1, so that's 3. Okay, so that means the part that I'm talking about is the triangle, and the whole darn thing is 28.26. That is the probability. All right, they want to know the probability of doing a diamond. That's the part I care about. And then 14, 21, 26. I don't think I can simplify, so I'm out. They want to know the one that's not a club, so that's the complement, which pretty much you're doing the total minus how many is not, which is 19 over 26. All right, this is where it gets a tad difficult. I need you to get the difference between independent events and dependent events. Okay, and I'm going to say this slowly so that you can get it. Independent versus dependent. I want you guys to just think about that being logical. If you are independent, you can do things all by yourself. You don't need anybody else. What I do does not affect anybody else. I am independent. Dependent is I will only be able to do something unless I have somebody else to help me. So I'm dependent on this guy to get to this one. So you do different things depending on if it's independent or dependent. Independent, what this guy does doesn't affect me, what this guy does doesn't affect me. So this digit doesn't affect my digit. But dependent is like your homework number four, where I use one of the numbers, and now it changes me because one of the numbers were used, so there's not as many options for me now. I am dependent on the previous guy. Okay? So what I want you to do now is look at number one and think about why it's independent. Okay. So a spinner is independent because what I get the previous time does not affect the next time. Now some people would go, well that's not true. If the four was, if the spinner's here versus here, it's going to make a difference what I get next time. Yes, but no, because let's be honest, can you really spin it 
and then suddenly predict because it was on the four versus the one. It's just not going to happen. So that means I spin a four and then I get a four again. This four will not depend on this one. If it was, we would be way more cooler at uh, board games because we would be able to predict what we're going to get next. So you've just got to figure out how many fours, one, two, three fours, and what were there, eight? And there's still going to be a three out of eight chance. It's not like I took out the four because I did it. If I suddenly took out the four and it wasn't there anymore, then that would be dependent because now me cutting this out means that is not an option anymore and it would be dependent, okay? But who cuts out a spinner? That'd be weird. All right, so then you multiply these, and that's 9 over 64, and you're done. Okay, so obviously you can't see the colors, so we're going to pretend the dark ones are red, the light ones are green, and the medium ones are blue. So they want you to spin a red. Notice how I'm labeling kind of for my own sanity, and then a green, and then a red. Does my red spin affect my green spin? If I was only so cool, then it would be yes, but that's not the case. I cannot do it. It's independent, and not because it's in the independent category. So reds, it looks like one, two, three over eight. How many greens? It looks like there's also one, wait, two, three, four. Now, let's be honest. If you interpreted the light as something else, it's okay. It's getting the game. And then the red, well, there's still three of them. It's not like I, unless I said this. If I said, once you pick one red, you can't pick that same red. That would suddenly be de dependent and it would change it. You don't know how to do that yet, I'll get there. But I want to let you know that's how it would be dependent. You can't use it anymore. Once I call on Rayon, I can't call on her ever again. That's dependent. That means Ari's likelihood of being, being picked is now gone up. Okay? Because now she knows I won't, I won't pick Rayon, so there's a better chance that I could pick one of you. Okay? So then 3 times 4, 36 over, I don't know what 8 cubed is. 512, that sounds right. Boom. So I should have simplified this one. If you do that on the test, it's wrong. I'm just trying to get to the video fast, sorry. All right, rolling a six on one number cube and then a six on the other number cube. Let's be honest, if I was only so cool as to do that, but we pick up a cube. So what you rolled previously, even though we feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna get a six next time. You could get a six and then another six and then another six. You could just keep rolling sixes. And sometimes that happens. Okay, but it's not dependent. We just feel like it should be. All right, so the thing that you guys have a hard time with is you focus on the number six. Well, how many sixes are on a cube? There are one. There is one six on a number cube. And how many numbers are on the cube? Six. So really, if this was a five, the answer would be the same. If it was a four, the answer would be the same. Now, that's my first number cubed, and then I do it again. It doesn't change my possibility. It definitely feels like it's not very likely, but if I said I'm going to roll a six and then I'm going to roll a five, the probability would be exactly the same because I can only get one five. Now, some of you go, but I'm more likely to get a five. But you have to get the five and the six. And to predict your two spins or your two rolls, that's pretty unlikely. And that is independent. So this one is also independent because when I pick up the coin, it's not going to affect what I had previously. I could keep getting heads and heads and heads and heads and heads and then a tail out of nowhere and then back to the heads. So there's only, let's see, they want a heads, then a heads, and then a tails. So they want a heads, a heads, and a tails. Well, honestly, I could have put tails, tails, tails. It doesn't matter. There's a 50% shot every single time. This guy is not dependent on this guy unless... I was a cheater and I had a double-sided coin, which was only heads. That's the only way. And come on, you shouldn't be cheating. All right, one out of eight. So now I'm going to talk about dependent events. If you look here, what makes this dependent is not because they're lemons and limes, but it's because when I pull out two pieces of fruit, it affects if I don't put it back. So the likelihood maybe of getting, if there's two lemons and one lime, the likelihood of getting a lime is one out of three. But if I took out a lemon and there's only one lemon now, now it's one half. So this guy was dependent on the fact that I pulled out the lemon. And that's what dependent means. So let's look at the first example. All right, it's still talking about cubes, which makes it feel independent. 
but it tells you the first guy is a six. So still independent. And there's only one out of six sixes. But then it says the sum is greater than nine. So this guy completely is dependent on this guy to get the sum greater than nine, okay? So the only possibilities that it could be, it can't be a one because that six plus one is seven. It can't be a two because six plus two is eight. It can't be a three because that's equal to nine. So it can only be a four, a five, and a six, okay? That means that's three out of six options. And now I multiply them and I get three over 36, which simplifies to 112. This is considered dependent. I cannot calculate this guy until I know this guy. The other ones, I could be like, here's this guy, here's this guy. This one doesn't affect this one. But this one is completely dependent on this one. And some of you go, but it seems independent. Well, anybody that's by themselves is independent. But as soon as somebody else comes into play, here, is this guy dependent on this one or is he also independent? In this case, dependent on this guy. But on this one, well, this guy doesn't affect that guy. So we got an independent, an independent, and an independent. And that's okay. All right, red cube shows an even number. Well, the even numbers are two, four, and six. So I have a three out of six chance. But then it's saying that the sum is five. So that means this is dependent on this. So I have to look now, I know that I can't get a 5 from a 6, so honestly, rolling a 6 is irrelevant, but not to this guy, because this guy just has to be even. The first guy is always independent until a second one comes into play, okay? So if you look then, my 2 and my 4 are the possibilities to get the sum to equal 5. So I have to get a 1 or a 3, because the 1 goes to the 4, which makes the 5. The 3 goes to the 2, which makes the 5. So I have a two out of six chance. Two times three is six over 36, which is one out of six. Now, it's, this one is kind of a weird one, honestly, because I could get the one, but if I roll a six, then I know it's out already. But the point that I want you to get is that this guy is completely dependent on him, okay? I can still roll it independently, but it's dependent on the other. Blue cube has a multiple of three. Well, that means something multiplies to get three. Three times one is three, and three times two is six. So there are two options out of six. And the sum is eight. Well, the only way the sum can be eight is if the three gives me a five and the six gives me a two. That's two out of six. Four out of 36 is a one out of nine shot. Now, the rest of your homework is going to be to finish this page. We'll continue. So we're going to skip the top. We'll worry about that Tuesday. Let's start down here. We're still doing independent or dependent, but getting a little bit more advanced to it. So here's the information, 12 blue, 12 red, 20 green. We have to decide if it's independent or dependent. Blah, 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 blah with replacement. That means you literally put it back. That means nothing changed that's independent. And the best way I can make you think about it is if you snuck something, but you don't want someone to know that it happened, you put it back exactly how it was, and independent, nothing ever happened. So I know that's independent. But if you look here, what does it say? I didn't put it back. So things change, right? Uh-oh, I didn't put it back. Is something going to happen to me? That's dependent on so many things. So I'm going to calculate both of them. I got a green and a blue. Here I got a blue and a blue. First thing I need to do is figure out how many cubes do I have, 12, 12, 24. I have 44. How many of them could be green? Uh, 20 of them could be green. How many of them are blue? 12 out of 44. I multiply that, get a super big number, simplify it, and get 15 over 121. Okay? Now here's the difference. This one, I've got tw uh, 12 blues out of 44, but remember, this second guy is now dependent on this guy. So I don't have 44 anymore. I have 43. Because I had 44 in the bag, but I took one of them out. So I only got 43 in the bag. Well, I don't have 12 blue ones anymore because I picked a blue one already. So now there's 11. And when I multiply that and simplify it, I get 3 over 43. Now I would like to point out this. If I did blue, green, without replacement, I want you to see that. Blue 
12 out of 44 green. Well, I never.